why you Job loss isn't to an end. We did, though, reach 30 degrees in Yorkshire over the weekend, and we had plenty of thunderstorms, something much fresher for the rest of this week. I'll be back later in the programme. I hope you're well on this Monday evening. It's claimed urgent action is needed, with schools in our region missing out on hundreds of pounds of funding per pupil. A report by MPs from a range of parties has looked at the north-south divide in education, which corresponds with high school absences and worse educational performance. Let's take a deeper look at this. According to the report, pupils in London receive almost 10% more funding than those across the north. In cash terms, that means schools in Yorkshire receive an average of £5,900 per pupil, but in London, the figure is more than £6,600. So, if we take the example of Alison High in Leeds, they have over 1,500 pupils. They'll receive over a million pounds less than a similar sized school in London. Olivia Richwald has our top story. Schools are already going beyond teaching to open breakfast clubs. Some even have food banks. Are they doing the job that the government should be doing? Summer school children, we all want to come. Next night, the retail chain Wilco, which is based in Worksop, will disappear from UK high streets. It's after a rescue bid by the owners of HMB fell through. Last week, 500 job losses were announced at the distribution centre and head office in the town. Unions say another 1,700 jobs will now be lost. David Rhodes is in Worksop for us tonight. David, talk us through what's been happening there today. But before that, a fake financial advisor from West Yorkshire has been jailed for five years for defrauding nine people with a total of nearly a million pounds. Peter Holbrook stole family inheritance, uh, inheritances to fund his gambling habits. He admitted his actions were disgraceful. The judge said he caused deep anxiety and hurt. In an exclusive BBC interview, the son of one victim has warned others to check who they're dealing with. Tom Ingle was at Bradford Crown Court. Peter Holbrook. The NHS is starting to give booster shots of COVID and flu vaccine to older people living in care homes in England over concerns about a new COVID variant. The faster than planned rollout aims to quickly top up the protection of those most at risk. Experts say it's still too early to know if it's more serious than past variants. Our health correspondent Jamie Coulson is here. It's a while since we've spoken about this, Jamie. What is the COVID situation in our region at the moment? Well, it is more difficult for us to assess the situation since the end of mass testing and since the Office for National Statistics stopped their infection survey. However, the UK Health Security Agency continues to monitor a range of measures and the most recent report suggests that while cases are creeping up, they're doing so from a very low level. One measure we can look at in this region is the number of hospital beds occupied by COVID patients. Now, as you can see on the 9th of July, 81 beds were occupied across the 13 trusts in our region. But by the 3rd of September, that had gone up to 317. For context, we can see back in January 2021 in the second wave, there were over 2,000 beds occupied. So this is snapshot data, but it gives you an idea of where we are now. Dr. Simon Padfield is from the UK Health Security Agency. Case numbers. It's about the new variant. Well, this new variant, it's called BA 2.86, and it has a number of mutations that have experts believing it needs to be watched very closely. As of the 4th of September, there were 34 confirmed cases in England, 28 of those in a single care home in Norfolk. There have been five hospitalizations and no deaths. There is community transmission of it now, but the UK HSA say it is still too early to know whether this will be a more severe form of the variant. The autumn boost has been brought forward. Who can get it? Well, the NHL and its rollout today, they're starting in care homes for older adults. Good to see you, Sally. Thank you, Amy. It's been a glorious weekend of sport, if you're watching or playing. And we start with Super League, which for our teams is all about survival. All four are in the bottom half of the table. And at the weekend, any hopes Leeds had of reaching the playoffs were crushed with a heavy 50-0 defeat at home to Wigan. But 
hopes of survival at least were boosted for Castleford. Jason Gary Gary got a double to help the Tigers to a 20 Super League. It's been a hugely successful season so far for York Valkyrie. They capped off an unbeaten 10 match campaign by beating Huddersfield Giants yesterday by 60 points to four. And they celebrated the football now and only a few games were played this weekend because of the international break. Bradford faced Grimsby at home and were got a goal down at half time. And it wasn't now swimming the channel is a well known and tough endurance challenge. But swimming the North Channel from Northern Ireland to Scotland is longer, colder and rougher. And this week jellyfish. Seasickness, I, I don't seem to suffer when I'm swimming. Jellyfish, I got hit six times, including in my mouth and across my face and across my arms and my ankle. Uh, but as an amputee, I'm used to pain. Actually, one of the things took the pain out. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> And one more piece of success from the water to bring you as well. A gold for Yorkshire's Georgina Brayshaw at the World Rowing Championships. Well done to her. Yes, a well done to the ice swimmer. Goodness me, those images. A bit chilly. Fantastic, <laughs> weren't they amazing? Yeah, very chilly. <laughs> Thanks, Al. Now, finally tonight, a blind man from Yorkshire is attempting to walk the entire length of the Cleveland Way. If you've ever done any of it, you'll know that it's really rough terrain. It's between Helmsley and Filey, and he's doing it to raise money for charity. Andrew Elika Reeve lost his sight after heart surgery but says he is determined to live life to the full. He set off on his 110 mile challenge this morning. Rochelle Lyons was there to see him off. Three. Best of luck with that walk. I bet he's pleased for much cooler weather today. Keely, I don't like to moan that it's too hot because I'm always thankful for sunshine, but blooming egg night times were a struggle, weren't they? Absolutely. We got up to 30.5 degrees on Saturday in wow. Sheffield. That was our hot spot for the week. Uh, you will be pleased to know uh, that it is going to be much fresher this week. It was also rather lively. Just take a look at some of these pictures that have been coming in. We had loads of thunderstorms over the weekend. In fact, across the UK, we had 15,000 lightning strikes over the weekend and the vast majority of them were either in the north of the UK or in Lincolnshire. We can have a look at our second picture. Uh, this is uh, another thunderstorm cloud developing over York. And actually our third picture, uh, when we get around to it coming on, is a sunbow there. So we did also have plenty of sunshine, but yes, it is going to be much fresher from here on in. In fact, tomorrow I think will feel very cool indeed. Keep your pictures uh, coming in to the Weather Watchers page or on social media as well on Instagram, keely.donovan. So yes, temperatures uh, back to average for the rest of the week, except for tomorrow when it will feel uh, really rather chilly. And that's because we've got a lot of cloud around. Uh, we've also got a cold front, which is slowly going to uh, spread southwards overnight tonight. And it'll still be with us uh, for some of tomorrow as well. So there it is clearing away on the pressure chart. A ridge of high pressure actually for Wednesday. So it looks dry and fine with some sunshine, but then unsettled again with further bands of rain, uh, areas of low pressure working their way in from the Atlantic uh, through the back end of the week. So on the radar picture, you can make out we've had a few showers and this is the cold front, which is spread into parts of North Yorkshire. It will continue uh, to spread southwards overnight tonight. So a lot of cloud outbreaks of rain. Some of that rain will be heavy at times. It's not going to be a cool night, though. We've got all of the cloud and still a bit of humidity, particularly across parts of uh, South Yorkshire. Temperatures dropping back to around 13 or 14 degrees. Let's have a quick look at those high water times then uh, in Whitby at 20 past three. So we'll start the day tomorrow with a lot of cloud. We'll still have this band of rain. It will only very slowly sink away southwards, leaving behind a lot of cloud, uh, some damp conditions through the day. We'll have to wait until much later on in the afternoon to start to see some brighter skies, some sunshine working their way into parts of North Yorkshire, but temperatures are very suppressed. If you didn't like the heat, maybe this is a bit more your kind of thing, 16 or 17 degrees. A 17 is 63 Fahrenheit. On Wednesday, a ridge of high pressure, dry and fine, uh, with temperatures locally perhaps getting up to around 19 or 20 degrees. Maybe you prefer that. I actually prefer it hotter. <laughs> oh, you're, you're no <laughs> pleasing you, isn't I you? know, I'm never <laughs> happy. Typical Yorkshireman. Uh, that's it from us. Mark, no, Hannah is here with your late news tonight. Bye-bye.